I stumbled upon this video a little while back ago, and my first take on it was uh, rather scathing. Didn't really like how that video turned out. So now, I want to talk about it again. I didn't upload the video, so in case you guys are wondering, where's the video? I didn't upload it, because <laughs> I didn't like it. Yeah. So, what we have here is a young lady who decides to tell us something that she honestly otherwise didn't need to tell us. Got another one of those oversharing on the internet type deals that people on TikTok just seem to can't get enough of. I find it rather disrespectful to themselves and to their relationship and their partner by that extension as well. But no, nah, whatever, I'm just some nigga on the internet. So it's, who cares? So she overshares this detail, which I don't think she recognizes makes her look rather abusive. In fact, she overshares another thing that makes her look rather abusive, that we could clearly see is abuse if men were to do it, if men were to craft what she has crafted. And yet, I guess because she's a pretty lady, which will become important later, a lot of people don't see it. Or it'd be more accurate to say that she doesn't see it, because it seemed to people in the comment section was like, yo, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> So at least some people are switched on. I am thankful for that. But this is what she initially said that made me perk my ears up. All eyes on me. Horrified looks from everyone in the room. So my first analysis of that was that um, her husband was an idiot. This ridiculously stupid contract to sign. Why? Because to be a stay-at-home wife is a privilege and a luxury unto itself. A little bit of irony is going to be placed in this video based on that word I just said there. Especially in the 21st century. At this point, being a stay-at-home wife, being a stay-at-home mom is something that can only be done for the select few. It's not a job position that's forced upon you by circumstance due to the fact that the outside world is just so much more difficult for you as a woman to handle. By the outside world, I don't mean literally walking down the streets. I mean working in bloody coal mines and signing up for the army and fighting on the front lines and, you know, working in mining fields and, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, being firefighters and policemen, you know, that kind of deal. Which isn't to say that women weren't important. Obviously, they were. It isn't even to say that women weren't valued. Obviously, they were. But the difference between being a stay-at-home mom in the past, one that is a position that's mostly forced on you due to the fact that most of the life that most humans throughout time and space lived in was, 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 was very, very menial. I wouldn't say menial, but is, was, was, just, was just very, very difficult. Versus now, where you can be a stay-at-home wife, and you can have a home business, you can work remotely. But even then, the luxury of having so requires someone to make more money than most people will make in their lifetimes. This is another thing. You have to be a top 10 to 1% male to even uh, to afford such a lifestyle for that woman. It's not the same thing. Stay-at-home wife in the past had more responsibilities, was far more difficult, you had to do far more manual labor. You had a washing board, you didn't have a washing machine. You had a broom, you didn't have a vacuum cleaner. You had a stove and an oven. You didn't have electric timers and stuff. You actually had to sit there and, and cook. You actually had to time it. You actually had to have the little timer thing that you turn in, pay attention to. It just wasn't built into the oven. You had washing machines, you know. Life was more difficult. Life was harder. Life was far more manual than it is now. It's far more of a luxury to stay at home as a woman. Not just because of the money it requires to do so, but the automation you have to make the actual job itself with your washing machines and your dish detergent soap <laughs> so much easier. And your TV dinners now. And your instant ready-made meals and your bloody hamburger helper. You don't even have to know how to cook. You just read the instructions off the box. Fair enough. You also have the internet. Again, you don't have to be taught how to cook. You just go on the internet, read a recipe, follow it. Not a bad thing. Love it, actually. Internet's fantastic. The point is... What it requires to be a stay-at-home mom in the 21st century is not what it was required in the 20th century 
or the 19th century or the 18th century to craft a contract in which you need to be paid for 15 years because you didn't have the career is ridiculous. Why do you have a career? You have a career so you can earn money. What do you need money for? To provide food, water, and shelter. So if someone else provides you with food, water, and shelter, what do you need a career for to get money for? So again, analyzing that contract, which honestly just doesn't even make any logical sense, I guess. I, I don't even understand why we'd have to pay for 15 years because the woman doesn't look older than 23. So there's no way that that's equivalent. I, it's just no, that's just ridiculous. I don't even, I don't even understand the logic behind that. <laughs> just, I don't even understand that. I mean, Alimony probably would have just taken care of that anyway. So it seems to me that the contract really exists to fearmonger. It really exists as a way to dissuade him from wanting to get a divorce, despite the fact that this woman probably doesn't really offer too much. And when I say probably, I don't really know. I'm sure when given the opportunity, this young lady will be able to explain exactly what she does offer. In fact, I remember one of the comments that, uh, the, the, I said comment, I meant the, um, the caption of her video reads as such, she says, I'll be damned if I ever end up on the short end of the stick because he wanted the luxury, she put in all capital letters, of having me available 24-7. Which seems remarkably selfish because I'm pretty sure that you have the luxury of having your husband 12-7. I say 12-7 because apparently, you know, like the other 12 hours he's working to provide you a house of which you can live in. So, um, it's interesting to me, right? You have to imagine that what she provides has to be astronomically fantastic. I mean, just absolutely amazing. It has to be. For, for her to say she is a luxury in this life and that she can't sacrifice her own self, her own life, right? It's wrong for her to sacrifice because she's just so amazing. I'm certain that when given the opportunity to explain what makes her so amazing, she will not disappoint us at all. In fact, she did have that opportunity. So from her own words, from her own mouth, this is why she's a luxury. Do you see me? Everything about me screams luxury, baby boy. Having the luxury of watching me clean your home. Having the luxury of me making and serving you homemade meals. Having the luxury and the privilege of watching and participating in me doing the nasty, it's all a privilege. Get on track. So, essentially, what makes you a luxury is that you're nice to look at, you cook food, you clean your house, and you have sex. Which... Correct me if I'm wrong, I thought we're all really bad um, stereotypes of oppression that that feminists stated. I mean, okay, fine, fair enough. Maybe you're not a feminist. But <clears throat> here's the reason why I don't think I can fully co-sign with the idea that you being a pretty woman is a virtue or a luxury unto itself. Again, notice how she said, he gets to watch me <laughs> clean. Watch, look at me. I mean, you do realize that, like, it's your house. Like, you have to clean it. You live there, too. The luxury of me cooking food for him. You have to eat, too. It's still a benefit to you. Like, what you're doing is not anything you wouldn't do if he wasn't there. You exist. You exist in his presence, and you do things that you would otherwise do regardless. <laughs> But then what's crazy is that she said having sex with her is a luxury and a privilege. As if she doesn't get anything out of that exchange. You have a child. Your son exists because you had sex with your husband. You get pleasure from having sex with him. You, you, have, to real, you have to understand, viewer, the implication... That having sex with her is a privilege 
implies that she's not getting anything out of that. Which I'm not sure if she recognized that that's what she's implying. Um, but yeah, that's the implication. That you don't really want to be there. That you're so special and magnanimous. That it's just that he should just appreciate that you exist in his presence. It's interesting because I've made commentary about this before. That women quite literally just have to be. And and from her own mouth, her analysis of what makes her a luxury is that she bees, that she's present, that she exists. When she was granted the opportunity to explain what made her such a wonderful person, such a wonderful human being, she didn't say her intelligence. She didn't say her kindness. She didn't say that she was reasonable. She didn't say that she was inspirational. She didn't say that she comes up with new ideas for him. She didn't say she helps him be a better man. She didn't say she even like she corrects his behavior. The best she could come up with as to why she is a luxury is that she's pretty and she cleans and she makes food. I can't even add sex to that list because she's an active participant too. I probably shouldn't add anything on that list. Because she has to clean her own house because it's her house. She lives there. If the man didn't live there, she'd still clean her house. Now, there's other reasons why I'm not really fond of this relationship. She overshares another thing. What she overshares is this. It's all eyes on me. Horrified looks from everyone in the room. Now, what's interesting here is that if we play the age old game of flip the genders, we'd be able to see how that is clearly abusive. That's clearly problematic. But even if it isn't abusive and problematic, it's absolutely, most certainly selfish. Your stay at home mother, what do you do to earn money that you need to keep it away from your husband who works to make sure that you have a life? To make sure your child is protected. That he's got a stable environment. What's so great about your money to where you need to protect it, but you can use all of his? Again, it's another power imbalance. In fact, even her physical attractiveness is a power imbalance. You see, it was interesting because a lot of people don't recognize this by a lot of young ladies. But they know. Some of them at least. There's not every woman is so self-loathing. Some of them are so insecure and self-loathing that they use whatever power and advantage they have to maintain their position in life. Some of them may do this, you could say, automatically. They do it without thinking too hard. Some of them truly are really thoughtful about the degrees of manipulation and control. I have to imagine that this woman here is just under pretty woman syndrome. And she just flutters through life without really thinking about it. Because I have to imagine that someone that was that intelligent probably wouldn't reveal these details out. You see, it makes me believe that this woman is probably abusive without actually really recognizing it. Is this last clip I saw. It goes a little something like this. I didn't put this in my contract. He didn't ask about it. But if he really wanted to go get another contract saying that... You know, if I cheated that he didn't have to pay, he could. I'd sign it. I think he genuinely knows that I'm not a cheater. So that just wouldn't happen. <laughs> I've had plenty of chances to cheat. You know, he's been deployed lots of times and never even crossed that line. I want you guys to notice something about that clip. It isn't the fact that she wants us to believe that someone as vain as she is, as controlling as she is, and someone that would create a contract that literally just stands to completely benefit her, wouldn't also be selfish enough to cheat. And she also expects us to believe that she is smarter than what she is so much so that like like as if we're going to expect her to literally get on camera and say yes i intend on cheating on my husband like cut us some slack right of course you wouldn't say that out loud 
But you know, the problem here that I noticed was the fact that during the initial draft of that contract, she didn't think about that. During the initial drafting of that contract, he didn't think about that. Obviously, because he just loves her so much. Maybe so. But the problem is, she could draft that contract right now. She wouldn't need to wait for him to make it. She could make it. And why would she make a contract that would make it null and void if she cheated? I'll tell you exactly why, viewer. Because she loves her husband. And when you love someone, you want to protect them. When you love someone, you don't want them to hurt. When you love someone, you don't create a contract that would punish them if they decide to get a divorce with you. If you love them, you would want them to have the best and you let it go. I'm going to be honest with you, viewer. I think it's uh, safe to say that this woman doesn't love that man that she's with. What she loves is the beta provider of what she's been given. This is a great case, I think, of being a beta provider. And I don't really like using that term, but it is a good way to explain the ideals, right? Incels have noticed the phenomena too, um, black pillars, red pillars, we all notice this phenomena. And the explanation of such is one of this. It is incredible amounts, incredible amounts of insecurity from the woman's own point of view. Because the woman herself recognizes a truth. A truth that even a lot of men don't recognize, but the woman recognizes it. And when they say it all the time, actually, if you have the ears to listen, if you have the ears to hear it, Everyone loves to talk about the wall. Women know the wall exists. But the problem is not the wall. The problem is the journey to the wall. A lot of people don't get that because they don't listen to women when they talk. Notice what the most important thing about her was. From her own analysis, notice when granted the opportunity to explain why she was a great person, the best she could come up with, what she decided to post on the internet was that she's pretty, was that she's pretty, was that she's pretty, and was that she was sexually attractive. Because remember, watching her cook, watching her clean, is all about her being pretty. <laughs> From her own mind, what is important about her is how she looks. There's nothing else there. She couldn't even come up with something better than that. And that's how a lot of women feel. And while some of them may get into different eating disorders, some of them express this insecurity differently, some of them rage against the machine, look at feminists, Look at their body dysmorphia. Look at them doing their body positivity. There's this huge raging against the machine of this truth that women feel. And that truth that they feel is that being pretty means nothing. Now, of course, to men, that's not true, right? Because we make concessions for pretty women. We see the effects of being beautiful. We do so much for attractive women. And they know. They see it. Of course, they're the ones living through it. They exist through it. Some of them obviously are going to deal with this differently, as such is human psychology. And so, what this woman has done is recognizing the hollowness of her own soul, decided she needed to lock down someone. She needed to lock down provisions. She knows that she's only pretty. She knows that she's not worth anything. She knows that she doesn't have any other great quality. Again, her own analysis is such as shown as this. So what does she do? She creates an outrageous contract to dissuade the idea of divorcing her. What does she do? She maintains her own assets while taking assets from her husband. What does she do on her own social media platform? She doesn't post her husband very often. In fact, I had to go scroll to it to look at it to see that he was a scrawny, kind of Indian looking guy, kind of dark skinned Indian looking guy. Not super handsome. I mean, to be, f I mean, look, I'm not homosexual, so I, maybe I guess he's handsome, I don't know. He's scrawny. He's definitely not a Hamza with his nice aesthetic body. It's not him at all. And you see, 
This is something that happens to a lot of young men. Now, again, since red pill, black pill men, we've all noticed this. One of the saddest things, one of the biggest problems is that women do this, and it seems like they're doing this almost automatically. This woman is self-snitching. This woman is telling on herself. It's not, it's not a carefully constructed plan that she did. This is just what being an attractive woman gives them sometimes. Their insecurity and their paranoia actually can turn them into abusive people. This is not a good relationship. And this man feels like he's walking on sunshine. Why? Not because he's with a life partner that appreciates him. It's a luxury for her to be there. She's not blessed by her own words. She didn't say, I'm grateful that my husband gave. It's, I, it's a luxury. I am gracing you with my presence. I'm gracing you with my food. You've given me this house to live in. You've given me this son that I love. You've given me money that I can use to take care of myself and to get the stuff that I want. But you, you don't owe, you don't, you didn't earn, you don't mean nothing. Having sex with me, that's a privilege. You should be lucky that I'm here. Does that sound reasonable to you, viewer? Sure, it's not as cold as I put it, but that's the implication. There's no protection for him. Why? Because she doesn't want to protect him. It's abuse, plain and simple. And these women can be abusive to men. And it gets to slide just because they're pretty people. The thing about looksism, a lot of people don't get this. It doesn't, it really, it doesn't, it doesn't bloody matter. The determinism, it doesn't matter. The genetics, it doesn't matter. The, it doesn't matter. The long and short of it is, we have constructed a world where people can be pretty and they get to do dumb, mean, cruel shit to individuals. Men can be handsome and they get to do dumb, cruel shit to people. And to call them out seems silly, but that's what this is. This woman does not love her husband. She's using him. And what's interesting to me is that TikTok, I don't know what it is about TikTok, but it makes these women self-report so much that now we can clearly see. Why am I making this video? is a cautionary tale. No man should ever be in a relationship with a woman that calls herself a luxury. No man, no woman by that token, should ever be in a relationship with someone that is so arrogant and egotistical that they call themselves a luxury when the best they can come up with is that they are nice to look at. If someone's a luxury to you, it would be not only self-evident, but you would want to provide and give these things to these people. And if that person has honor, that person has compassion, if that person loves you, they will feel compelled to give it back out. That woman would have never crafted a 15-year severance pay if she wanted to protect this man. And this man, if he respected himself, never would have signed that dumbass contract. But because she's pretty, and she's the prettiest you'll ever get, because we overvalue sexual attractiveness so much, people who are pretty just get to do awful, dumb shit. Just throw our hands up and say, I'm a party. And women aren't exempt from this. Women do the same thing. The cautionary tale is this, and rather simple. You can't get swooned up by people being attractive. You have to look deeper into their character. You have to actually evaluate them. You have to listen to them when they tell you who they are. And you have to do, as I always say, the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And sometimes that's looking at an attractive person you really want, seeing their character and saying, no, you're awful. So that being said, I just hope you guys got something out of today's video. I really do. And if you did, you know, go ahead and click the like button. Shoot, go and click that subscribe button. Come in the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.